Hello and welcome to Peoria Riverfront Museum's exhibition called Thomas D. Mangelson, A Life in the Wild. My name is Lottie Fittis and I am the Curator of History here at Peoria Riverfront Museum. Today I'm going to share with you a little bit about the exhibition A Life in the Wild. But before I get started, I want to give a special thanks to our sponsors for this exhibition. PDC, the Coulter family, and a additional support from the Corporate Visionary Society Council and the Illinois Arts Council. Thomas Mangelson has been a wildlife photographer for nearly 50 years now, photographing all over the world on all seven continents. His goal is to give viewers an insight into these iconic animals and encourage viewers to look at these images as a way of conservation. The first Thomas Mangelson print that we are going to talk about today is this one right here called Catch of the Day, taken in Alaska in 1988. Uh, because it was taken in 1988, it was done without any digital manipulation, which is actually something a lot of Mangelson's work is known for. This is probably the most iconic work of Mangelson and it shows this Alaskan brown bear catching a sockeye salmon in its mouth um, coming as it comes up the river. There's about a three foot drop here and Mangelson was waiting days to get this incredible shot that is now iconic of his work. The image we see here is called Snake River Crossing, taken in 2010 at the Grand Teton National Park. All of Mangelson's images are taken under natural conditions, and he often will wait hours to get the perfect image. This one here was taken in the early morning hours. Mangelson always tries to wait uh, in either the morning or the evening, either an hour or two after after sunrise to an hour or two after sunset to get what he calls the magic hour or the golden hour. And what we see here are elk crossing this river and you can see them sort of fade into the fog in the early morning hours. Here we have Thomas Mangelson's piece called Shades of Sapphire, which was shot in 2002 in Tanzania. Again, this is another image that has a very painterly quality to it. It's evoking almost that fine art image. And Thomas Mangelson was good friends for many years with Bob Bateman, who is a renowned wildlife painter. And Bateman often talked to Mangelson about how to handle negative spaces. And in this one in particular, you see the jaguar. Your eyes are immediately drawn to it, but you also begin to notice the color of the jaguar's eyes matching this color on the sausage tree. Here is an image called Wintering Wax Wings, taken in 1986 in Wyoming. This is actually the earliest image that we have on display in this exhibition. This image is actually really important because Thomas Mangelson has been known for being a pioneer in creating color wildlife photography as a fine art form. And here we see the Bohemian wax wings in an ash tree, and you see all the different colors and textures and patterns really evoking something that you might see on an oil on canvas. Here we have cranes of gray wind taken on the Platte River in 2011. Mangelson actually has a cabin near the Platte River as that is where he spent much of his time growing up. He grew up as an avid hunter and fisherman with his father. He still frequents this area and spends much time in the spring photographing these cranes at any given time, there could be up to a half a million cranes in some of these areas. In addition, he also will take his dear friend, Jane Goodall, fellow wildlife conservationist, out to spend time with her while photographing these cranes. 
Here is a beautiful image entitled Light in the Forest. It is a tigress taken in India in 1998. Mangelson actually sat atop an elephant for three hours waiting to get this exact image as he waited for the light to perfectly get behind the tigress. You can actually see on this image there are some red spots on her paw and her arm as she had just completed a hunt. Here is Thomas Mangelson's print called Windswept, taken in 2008 in Wyoming at the Yellowstone National Park. Bison, less than 200 years ago, there were about 35 million of them and they were hunted to near extinction. Today, there are about 4,000 in the West Plains, mostly located in the national park system. The legacy of the bison was so important that it was given the title of the National Mammal of the United States in 2016. In order to get these close-up shots, Mangelson uses his preferred camera of a Nikon and he uses a varying levels of lenses, anywhere from 20, 40, and 60 millimeters so that he can get as close as possible without interrupting the wildlife. Here is another beautiful image by Thomas Mangelson. This one is entitled Druid's Frosty Morning Passage. And the name Druid's actually comes from this pack of wolves that we see running in a line across here. The Druid's Peak Pack were actually the first wolves reintroduced to Yellowstone National Park. This image was taken in 2008 on a very, very chilly early morning where it was negative 25 degrees. This beautiful image taken of the Serengeti National Park in Tanzania in 2002 depicts these giraffes awaiting the rainstorm that is coming given that it is the dry period. You can see the lake in the distance and Mangelson waited several hours for these cloud lines to form so that he could get this image. Here's my favorite image in the whole exhibition. It's entitled A Change of Seasons and it was taken in Denali National Park in 1998. Here, Mangelson really starts to play around with the landscape scenes and it's something that almost has a very painterly quality to it, which was something that Mangelson was going for. Here it depicts a bull moose um, looking out over the horizon of the trees with the mountains in the background. It's just an absolutely stunning image that really highlights Mangelson's desire to get the perfect lighting at the perfect time of day. This really fun image of three polar bears was taken in 1992 in Canada. Mangelson took this shot as these three polar bears named the bad boys of the Arctic, as they were wandering north, likely looking for food. And this polar bear stopped to scratch his back on this piece of ice. The moment really only lasted for a few minutes, but Mangelson was lucky enough to capture it. The polar bears then continued on their journey north. And here's my second favorite of the exhibition, entitled Guardian of the Night Inlet, taken in 2005 in British Columbia. Mangelson often, when he titles his pieces, they usually have a little bit of a deeper meaning to them. Um, he suggests in this one, it is more of a poetic title than some of the others that titles he's given to his pieces. And in order to shoot this bear um, in British Columbia, he spent 42 days. This was just coming out of the hibernation period, and he would go every day waiting to see if a bear would emerge from its den. Finally, this bear did, and he knew the shot that he wanted to get was the bear on these moss-covered rocks. So he waited an additional six days after the bear came out of its den to finally get this shot. 
Thank you so much for watching this short tour of Thomas D. Mangelson, A Life in the Wild. I hope you all have an opportunity to come in and go on the journey that Mangelson has intended for us through these photographs. Again, I want to thank our sponsors, PDC, the Coulter family, and our additional sponsors of the Visionary Society Corporate Council and the Illinois Arts Council. Thank you so much.